two gays make a pact and they run away together. There's also a really cool sword fight halfway through where it was all staged. I don't... Romeo and Julius was a good play, I promise you. Honestly, the same thing I said last video applies. Maybe the real treasure we found along the way was marriage and a triangle genie and whatever the fuck Citron was doing in the mixed cast stage play. Honestly, I've never known the plot of how wonderfully picturesque, but Taiji's always had a really cute character. Also, Homeri did a great job in that mixed cast. Anyway, yeah, same thing I said last video. Motherfucker simmed so hard he lost his damn halo and didn't realize he had a gay lover the whole time. It's Alice in Wonderland, but it, it's, Al it's, Alice in, it's Alice in Wonderland. It's just Alice. In, it's literally still just Alice in Wonderland. There are two cats, and they are for sure on a fucking adventure to get those damn sardines with a lot of cat puns in the way. Really emo dude adopts his kitty finds because that's, that's normal. That's just normal. Also, Barry's performance in the stage play was amazing. We say it's a Homeri lead, but Hisoka really stole the show, and I hate that for him. I fucking hate that. Gay. Sad. Sad and gay. G gay and sad. Every time I see this play, a fucking flashbacks. What the fuck? They are two pirates. They're gonna find this damn treasure. There's also someone, I think, who's evil on their ship. I've read this story now. I have read this story officially, but holy shit, this is the only thing I remember is the three seconds that we get of Madoka and Muku interacting. Honestly, I'll never fully understand exactly what the play was trying to prove, but the stage play does a really good thing about fighting your inner demons, which I think is kind of cool. Gay. Gay vampires. Why is the ending like that? They should have... They should... He should have bit him. He should have bit him and brought him... We should have gotten the happy ending. I... A man lies so much that he ends up adopting a kid because of how much he lies. Dead ass. Honestly, I'm never gonna know what First Crush Baseball or Love Out of Left Field, whatever you wanna call it, I'll never know what it's about. But I'll always appreciate that play. Because anything for you, Kumin. As I said last video, Z Zombie wants to beat up his zombie dad. It's the Phantom of the Opera, but significantly gayer, and honestly, a little bit better, because the original Phantom of the Opera is kind of weird if you think about it too much. Okay, you know what? I can sit here and say I hate Itaro and Jakage all day, but I'm on my character development arc, so you know what, I'm tired of hating on them. This play was really good. This play single-handedly made me an Itaro stand again. I, I don't really know the plot of the play. I kind of forgot it, I won't lie, but I do know that someone in it has a character named Santa, and I think that's really fucking funny. Okay, Fire Ranger Fist is literally about two kids who fucking want McDonald's so bad they're willing to fight for it. Okay, Die by the Sword is actually a really nuanced and sad play, but the weird subplot about Ozma and Homeri's characters falling in love is really cute, but also feels really out of place for such a weird, dark, gritty storyline about sword fighting. How to go- Okay, you know what, we're not playing this game today. I've actually still not read this event story. I'm sorry, I know. But from what I have heard, it is about- Apparently this really arrogant guy finds this really cool guy who helps him out and they're like, they don't actually fall in love, but they like basically fall in love. And that's a beautiful thing. That's beautiful. I love that. Floral prints. So basically there's this magical flower. I really like Fallen Blood simply because they really explore the downside of being a hero slash vigilante. And I mean, I've seen comics and stuff talk about it, but that's just me going into a little nerdy moment and I will not be doing that here. But I really, really love this play and I think it's one of the best plays that Liber has written, like actually play-wise. Risky Game hurts my head. Risky Game gives me a headache, but man loses his wife, goes gay and gambles. Magician's Pure Love is basically about this guy who simped so hard he became a magician to be like her, wink wink, nudge nudge, and if someone lied and stole a doll and he never saw his mentor again. Plus Three Ghosts is basically a glorified coming of age story with Ghost, but I think it really shows you the sadness and the fleetingness of what summer can bring, and I think that was really nice to touch on. Ake bonus though, the story was great. But the play was just fucking hilarious. Unironically, really funny fucking play. A hotel, but it travels through time for literally no reason. And it's about watching yourself become lonely and accepting it. Because this is Ozma. Of course it's about that. I hate you, Ozma. I literally, I literally don't know the plot of it. Never been told. 
probably will never know. I'm not reading the story. Not not now. I'm staying far away from that. Still never read Run Around the Fields, but I heard it has something to do with Suzuri's brothers. So maybe it's about, like, accepting differences or trying to understand different people who come from different backgrounds. That's just a wild guess, though. Clowns. Clowns, but they find a miracle baby. There's a miracle chat. I don't know. Last Runway, I don't know anything about the play, but the two songs, amazing, brilliant, talented, wonderful. I read Yin Yang Midnight. I don't remember the plot, actually, unironically. I know what the story is about, but I don't remember the plot. Do with that what you will. Scarlet Mirror, I refuse to believe about anything, but just a huge metaphor for Gekka. It's just a huge metaphor for Gekka, whether you want it to be or not. Actually, I'm gonna act out this play really quick. Give me your soul. Uh, 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 okay, soul. I want it. You can you can have my my soul. I want your fucking soul. I, you can you can have my. I want your soul. I you can you you can have it. And then God takes the soul anyway. <laughs> okay. All jokes aside, a moral code is literally just about a guy who does not have any confidence unless he's extremely drunk and i just think that's unironically so fucking funny because there's nothing funnier than watching chibi tenma shake in his boots as he holds a sword funny as shit boy with no magic turns out he has magic there are dragons by the way i'm not like sure exactly what this play is about simply because i've never really read it read it but i think it has something to do with acting doesn't Ozma play, like, a woman in it or something like that? Not that that's surprising for him. Or, like, he plays a cross-dresser or something, right? The play has something to do with some form of acting. I just can't think of the style of acting right now. You know, I should be explaining, like, a joking plot summary of Phantom Thief. But I'm just mad that Juza and Mugu canonically in this play only get one moment on stage together. What the fuck was that, Liber?